Carotenoids are associated with a younger epigenetic age and a reduced all-cause mortality risk. So let's have a look at that data. So first we can see that blood levels of carotenoids, the total level of carotenoids in blood, is negatively correlated with DNA M Grim age, which stands for uh, DNA methylation, and it's the Grim age epigenetic clock. And in the bicore column, we can see that that correlation is negative, which means that the higher the blood levels of carotenoids, the younger the epigenetic age. And that data is in a study of about 2,300 subjects in the N column, and it's a statistically significant uh, correlation as indicated by the P or p-value. Now, carotenoids uh, isn't just one metabolite. It contains a group of five metabolites. So how does the data look for the five individual carotenoids with uh, epigenetic age as indicated by Grim age? So the carotenoids lycopene, alpha-carotene, beta-carotene, lutein plus zeaxanthin, and beta-cryptoxanthin, uh, each of them and all of them were significantly negatively correlated with epigenetic age, which means that the higher the blood levels of each of these uh, carotenoids, the younger the epigenetic age. Now, there currently aren't any uh, randomized controlled trials that have looked at uh, any of these uh, carotenoids or all of them uh, for their ability to cause decreases uh, in epigenetic age. For now, it's just a correlation. But when considering that these uh, metabolites are found in foods, it seems like a low risk, potentially high reward uh, system to optimize uh, epigenetic age as one aspect of biological age. So with the goal of slowing epigenetic aging, which foods contain these carotenoids? And that's what we can see here. So let's go through them uh, one by one. So first, uh, alpha carotene is found uh, uh, primarily in carrots, pumpkin, winter squash, plantains, and collard greens. And for me, I get the majority of my daily uh, alpha carotene, about 15 milligrams per day, from uh, 416, an average of 416 uh, grams per day for carrots. And that's the uh, average value for the about the two-month period that corresponded to my latest blood test that I took in early March. Similarly, uh, uh, carrots are my predominant source of getting beta carotene, as beta carotene also are rich in carrots, green, uh, green uh, leafy greens, it says leafy greens there, which uh, tripped me up a bit. Sweet potato, cantaloupe, uh, or actually orange sweet potato, cantaloupe, and pumpkin. Uh, lycopene, as we probably all know, is, is popularized in tomatoes, but it's also rich in watermelon and other foods like papaya and grapefruit. So as we can see, I get the majority of my lycopene from watermelon. Uh, 134 grams per day gives me about 5 to 7 milligrams of lycopene per day. Lutein and zeaxanthin is found primarily in leafy greens, summer and winter squash, Brussels sprouts, and also yellow corn. And I get the majority of my lutein plus zeaxanthin uh, with spinach and broccoli. And that's about somewhere uh, about 25 to 30 milligrams uh, per day of lutein plus zeaxanthin. And then beta cryptoxanthin is found primarily in uh, pumpkin, papaya, uh, red bell peppers, sweet peppers, uh, orange, and carrots. And I get the majority of my beta cryptoxanthin, uh, about 2 milligrams per day, from my red bell pepper intake. Now, is is Grimage a good epigenetic clock? I mean, seeing a correlation between carotenoids with Grimage is interesting, but if Grimage isn't actually a good epigenetic clock, then who cares, right? So uh, as we can see in the title, though, a younger Grimage is a, you know, the epigenetic age for Grimage is associated with a reduced all-cause mortality risk. And the title of this paper says it all. So the title is Grimage outperforms other epigenetic clocks in the prediction of age-related clinical phenotypes and all-cause mortality. And we can see the data under the title where the uh, authors of the study compared various epigenetic clocks, in this case, Horvath's uh, 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 epigenetic clock, which is the best of the bunch for predicting chronological age, but based on this data, it's not the best for predicting all-cause mortality risk. Uh, and then they looked at other epigenetic clocks, the Hanum clock, Levine's uh, phenoage uh, methylation clock, and then Grimage. And so of these four uh, methylation uh, epigenetic clocks, uh, Grimage was the only one that uh, identified a significant association between an older epigenetic age through Grimage with an increased all-cause mortality, uh, mortality risk, which is what, uh, what we can see by the 1.91 uh, hazard ratio, so a 91% increased risk with an older uh, epigenetic age as in indicated by Grimage. So what I've shown you so far is that cumulatively, these data uh, suggest that higher blood levels of carotenoids may reduce uh, epigenetic age, lead to a younger epigenetic age, and then a younger epigenetic age, as indicated by Grim age, is associated with a reduced all-cause mortality risk. Now, the links in this chain that uh, I haven't shown you yet uh, are the, you know, are higher blood levels of carotenoids associated with a reduced all-cause mortality risk just by themselves. So let's have a look at that data. 
And actually, that is true. So higher blood levels of carotenoids have been shown to be associated with a lower all-cause mortality risk. So first, in looking at the data for total carotenoids in blood, in a meta-analysis of seven studies, and all the data I'm going to show in this slide are based on a meta-analysis um, with a variety of studies, from two studies up to uh, seven or eight studies. So first, looking at the total amount of carotenoids in blood, we can see that the higher the levels of blood carotenoids, the lower the risk for all-cause mortality. In this case, it looks very linear. So the higher your uh, blood levels of the carotenoids, you, you should see a continued reduction in all-cause mortality risk, all the way up to about 180 milligrams per deciliter for blood carotenoids. And that's compared with lower intakes, you know, say 20 milligrams per deciliter in blood. Now, what about the individual carotenoids? So first, looking at uh, beta-carotene in blood, again, meta-analysis of eight studies, we can see that there's a significant uh, decrease in all-cause mortality risk uh, for higher levels, blood levels of beta-carotene. Uh, and that's when compared with lower intake, say at about 10 milligrams per deciliter. So what about the other carotenoids? So alpha-carotene, similar story. Higher blood levels of alpha-carotene, lower all-cause mortality risk. Uh, and also that's true for beta-cryptoxanthin, as we can see there, and then uh, lycopene too. Now, of all the carotenoids, the only two that were not significantly associated with all-cause mortality risk, and one reason may be because of uh, a limited amount of studies, were, was lutein and zeaxanthin. So in two studies, uh, these carotenoids were not associated with all-cause mortality risk. Uh, now, unfortunately, DNA Grimage is not commercially available. That's not the uh, epigenetic test that it, you see that's all over the uh, internet, all over the interwebs, uh, that people are, are measuring their epigenetic age. So uh, is there a link between carotenoids with the clinical biomarkers, which uh, as if you watch this channel, uh, I spend a lot of time on uh, Levine's phenotypic age calculator, which is based on clinical biomarkers or uh, more uh, easily available clin 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 sorry, clinical biomarkers that you get when you go to the, you know, to the doctor uh, once a year or more. So uh, is there a link between the carotenoids with clinical biomarkers? So uh, this is my data in my blood test data. So this is uh, 28 blood tests from 2015 to 2021. So the past six years, 28 blood tests. And uh, we can see uh, it's the uh, association between albumin, serum levels of albumin on the y-axis with my average daily beta carotene intake on the x-axis. And what we can see is that the higher my average daily beta carotene intake is, the higher my levels of albumin are. And that's a significant correlation uh, with a p-value of 0 0.008, with a correlation coefficient uh, moderate strength of uh, 0 0.6. Now, why is al why albumin? Why is albumin important as a biomarker? Well, it's present in four separate predictors of biological age. And I should mention that in each of these studies, the, the uh, authors of the, of the study, uh, the scientists didn't go and say, all right, I'm going to put albumin in my uh, biological age predictor. They let the stats identify the composite of biomarkers that best explain biological age. And in each of these four different studies, albumin was picked by the stats. So uh, those studies are Levine's phenotypic age. Albumin is found in that. It's found in aging.ai. Uh, there was a calorie restriction uh, randomized control trial, RCT, that I did a video on. I'll link to that in the right corner if you're interested in that. And then there was a fourth uh, uh, study, uh, Waziri, in 20, 2019, that in included albumin as a, a predictor of biological age. So in terms of biological age, it's, a, it's an important biomarker. Now, higher, higher levels of albumin are associated with youth, and that's what we can see here. In a study of more than one million subjects, we can see that higher levels of albumin were found in youth, whereas relatively lower levels were found at advanced uh, ages, and it declines during aging. Now, not only does uh, albumin decline during aging, uh, which illustrates its importance, but higher levels of albumin, which are found in youth, are also associated with a reduced all-cause mortality risk in the oldest old. And that's what we can see here. So uh, just to break down this data, it, it was uh, groups of older adults from 85 to older than 105 years old. And in the three different uh, brackets that you've got here, it's 85 to 99 years, 100 to 104 years old, and then uh, people who are older than 105 years. And what they did is they looked at uh, clinically relevant biomarkers, uh, in this situation, HDL, LDL, hemoglobin A1C, creatinine, uh, EGFR, but using creatinine uh, to determine EGFR, not cystatin C, uh, C-reactive protein, but not high-sensitivity C-reactive protein, and then albumin. So they compared each of these clinically relevant biomarkers for their association with all-cause mortality risk for each of these age groups so at advanced ages. And of these biomarkers, <clears throat> the only one that was consistently um, significantly associated with all-cause mortality risk at every age 
all of these ages was albumin. So higher levels of albumin were uh, associated with a lower all-cause mortality risk for each of the age groups. Now, not only that, the magnitude of, the, uh, of this effect was most pronounced for albumin at all of the age groups too. So starting from the 85 to 99 year olds, we see a 27% reduction uh, for all-cause mortality risk with higher albumin, 26% uh, reduction for the 100 to 104 year olds, and then a 34% reduction in all-cause mortality risk for uh, the uh, people who are older than 105. So in other words, the higher your albumin, the lower your risk of mortality, even at the extremes of, of lifespan. So just as a quick summary, uh, I showed you that, uh, oh, I didn't show you, but carotenoids, ri carotenoid rich foods would be expected to uh, increase blood levels of carotenoids. Higher blood levels of carotenoids are correlated with a younger epigenetic age, and younger epigenetic age, as, as uh, measured by uh, DNA M Grim age, is associated with reduced all-cause mortality risk. Separately, carotenoid-rich foods, including uh, beta-carotene in my data, is uh, correlated with increased uh, serum levels of albumin, and higher levels of albumin are uh, associated with a reduced all-cause mortality risk. So when considering all of these data, it, it seems like a wise strategy to include carotenoids, carotenoid-rich foods, into our diet. All right, that's all I've got for now. Uh, if you made it to the end, uh, thanks a lot. I hope you enjoyed the video, and have a great day.